Welcome to Math 105, Mathematical Thought and Practice. I'm Dr. Salamone. Let's get a quick overview of the syllabus and a little bit about how this course is going to work this semester. Mathematical Thought and Practice is about all the ways, well, not all of them, but some of the ways in which we can think mathematically that aren't necessarily the kinds of math that you grew up with coming up through school. There's a lot more to math than solving for x, and we want to see some of it this semester. So we're going to sort of think about three main things this semester. The first being, what does sets and logic have to do with thinking mathematically? So why is that a mathematical thing to do? And the second is we're going to talk about growth and models of growth. We're going to see a little bit of how algebra gets used here, um, but we want to center it in sort of the real life questions that we care about. Uh, and finally, we also want to think about data and statistical literacy. So how do we think about and represent and critically analyze the uses of data and presentations of data that we see around us? Um, so this is a course that's about the kinds of math that we can expect to encounter on an everyday basis, regardless what career we go into, um, if we want to be secure in our finances, if we want to be engaged citizens in the world, this is the kind of mathematical thinking that's going to help us to do those things. Now this is a web-only course this semester, so that means that all of our interactions and all of your learning is going to take place virtually. Uh, there's nothing that we're going to do that's going to require you to be on campus at a particular time. That being said, I'm hoping that during the first week of the semester we can find some common times during the week that we can at least get small groups of students together for sort of office hours and virtual lecture kind of sessions. So be on the lookout for a poll on that soon. Um, the various locations in which our course is going to take place on the web can all be linked to through the course's Blackboard site. So this is kind of the one-stop wayfinder site uh, to find everything that you need to know. And there's sort of four key components. The first is what I call learning mode. Learning mode is where you're going to go to read, watch instructional videos, uh, and gain practice by working through practice problems in a feedback-rich environment uh, in an online platform called Newton Alta. Now, Newton Alta is going to substitute for your textbook as well as for your online homework this semester. Um, and it's a very low cost uh, material. It costs about $10 a month, or for $44, you can get two years worth of access. And what you'll see inside of Alta uh, is a system that uh, prompts you with some questions. If you know how to answer them, that's great, and you can get through each topic fairly quickly. Um, if you don't know how to do it and you'd like some instruction, you can click, and Alta will offer you instruction. Uh, that can come in the form of things to read that are sourced from open educational resources online, videos produced by a variety of content creators that are sort of short lectures that you can watch, um, and use this richly supported environment. You can go back, see the instruction, then jump back to the assignment uh, and answer problems and move forward. And this is the main place that you're going to get exposure to and practice with new material this semester. Now the assignments inside of Newton Alter are divided into two types, what I call the me time assignments and the we time assignments. The me time assignments are sort of brief, introductory, a little bit more basic level introductions uh, to the content that we're going to be working on during a given week. Complete those on your own. They tend to require usually a little bit lower order thinking, so it's more about definitions and getting familiar with new concepts. The we time, on the other hand, this is where the really good questions start to, to come at you and the more nuanced integrative thinking happens. So we time assignments tend to have fewer learning objectives, but they're sort of the deeper learning objectives uh, to work on over the course of a week. We time assignments are things I'm going to want you to work on in groups uh, as well as individually. Uh, and the focus of our uh, meetings that we hold virtually online, the, the video lectures and the video office hours, will generally focus on the we time uh, assignments and helping you to finish with those. So in the course syllabus, on page two, uh, you can see that I've listed the me time assignments and the we time assignments at the bottom. Um, and completion of those is on a complete, not complete basis. So you'll receive credit for a me time assignment if you've earned 100% credit. So if you've gotten mastery on that assignment in Newton Alta by the due date. Same thing with the we time assignments. Um, and the numbers of those that you complete over the course of the semester, each one that you complete, you check off a box on page three of your syllabus. Check off the boxes from left to right. And that's true in every one of these rows. So your learning initiates in the me time and the we time assignments in Newton Alta, with me times generally being due on Tuesdays and the we times generally due on Saturdays. Of course, you can get them done early if you like, um, but that's when the due dates are for each of those assignments. Now, at the end of each week, as you're completing the we time assignments and really gaining mastery over the material for that week, your next step is to submit a quiz. And quizzes happen as pencil and paper quizzes uh, downloaded and then resubmitted once you've done them uh, through our Blackboard site. When the course begins, you'll be able to find those quizzes in the quizzes link over here on the left side of Blackboard. 
To prepare for the semester, I'm suggesting two different options for how you're going to complete these quizzes. Uh, if you happen to have an iPad or other tablet that can do stylus kind of writing, uh, this is a really elegant way to submit these quizzes. You can download them, complete them, and re-upload them all without going to paper, uh, which is kind of nice. It also produces really nice looking uh, files when they get uploaded. If you don't have a tablet, um, then a printer and a scanner is going to be the way to go. Um, download a quiz, print the quiz, complete the quiz, and then re-upload it. If you don't have a document scanner, uh, there's a great app called Adobe Scan uh, that you can use on any mobile device that uses the camera to generate a PDF file uh, out of your finished quiz to re-upload. So mastery quizzes are the next sort of key element. After you've mastered some content inside of Newton Alta, you'll submit one of these mastery quizzes uh, at the end of the week by Saturday to demonstrate that you've grasped the material for that week. You'll get full credit for a mastery quiz if at least about 80% of the problems on that quiz meet the completeness and correctness criteria set forward in the syllabus, uh, which means that they have to be complete, correct, fully supported by appropriate steps, and also thorough written explanation. You can make small errors, but those errors have to be so small as not to detract from the reasoning that's happening inside of those problems. If, you, if your mastery quiz meets that standard, then you receive full marks for that mastery quiz. If every problem on the quiz meets that standard, you also get a grade called exemplary. And I'll talk a little bit more about how exemplary grades get used. On page four of the syllabus, you'll see a place for you to check off the mastery that you earn on each topic as you go along. So for example, if in the first week of the semester I take a mastery quiz on topic number one and I receive full marks, either a satisfactory or an exemplary mark, then I'll be able to check this checkbox right here. Um, and that gets me one check mark in this topic. Now you'll notice that you'll need two check marks in order to claim mastery for that topic. That second check mark can come later on the exam that gets taken on this. It can come much later on the final exam, but the point is once you've gotten those two check marks or more for a given topic, you can then come and claim a mastery check mark in your grade sheet. So two check marks on a given topic, two full marks satisfactory or exemplary uh, on either a quiz or an exam gets you mastery for that topic and a check mark in uh, your grade progress report on this side. Exams come along three times during the semester. And exams tend to cover multiple topics at once. You can see which those are on page four in the topics list. Um, and if your submitted exam shows that you've retained mastery of all of the topics uh, that are covered on that exam, uh, then you also get these additional retention uh, check boxes that you can check here on the back side. Um, this is just a check to, to make sure that you're hanging on to the knowledge that you're getting over the course of the semester. So what happens if your work on a quiz or an exam doesn't meet the standard for full credit? Well, I use a process that's called standards-based grading. What the intention of that is, is to help you to focus on what are the main topics and skills that you need to be developing, instead of focusing on what are the individual quizzes, assignments, tests that I need to be stressing about. Right? Um, and what that means for you is that my most important thing to me is that you're learning and not when you're learning. So if you don't get full marks on a quiz the first time around, you have an opportunity to revise that quiz later on down the line. And the way that revision works uh, is that you'll submit an alternate version of that quiz or of that exam and submit it back to Blackboard. Um, if you get full marks on that revision, then you get a check mark just as, you, just as though you had gotten full marks the first time around. Um, a maximum of one of those revisions is able to be submitted per week, uh, although you can submit more than one if you redeem a coupon. I'll talk about those in a moment. So my goal is to give you plenty of opportunities throughout the semester to demonstrate your mastery uh, on a given topic. And once you've mastered it, you get that check mark in your grade progress report, and no one can take that away from you uh, throughout the semester. Finally, the last component of your grade that I want to talk about is a project. So we'll be putting you into small groups and doing a project this semester where we get to analyze some real life situations of, of interest uh, and use the skills that you're developing to build a communication and, and a presentation uh, around them. Uh, so I'll give you more information about that when the project begins, about the beginning of the second month of the course or so. Um, but your completion of this project, I'll give you specifications for uh, what you'll need to complete in order to get certain grades. That also also figures into your grade as well. So you'll be checking off all of these progress report checkboxes uh, throughout the semester. So how does that actually determine your grade? Well, what you'll notice at the top of page three is that these are organized into columns. This is why you check the checkboxes from left to right. In order to earn a given base grade, A, B, C, or D, 
you need to check all of the boxes in that column. So for example, if my target grade for the semester is a C, if I want to earn a C of some flavor or another, then that means that I need to complete the project up to at least a progressing standard, so at least a P standard. I need to demonstrate retention at least once. I need to be able to check this checkbox. I need to be able to demonstrate mastery on at least six topics, so I would have had to have checked off all six of these boxes in addition to possibly, well, I would need two more also if I'm aiming for a C. And I would need to complete all of the we time checkboxes, uh, these first nine over here and then five additional ones. And I would need to complete all of the me time in the first column, which is 14 of them here and six more of them there. So I need to check if I want to see all of the checkboxes in the C column and in the D column. If I can do those two things, then that means that I have at least a C base grade for the semester. You can earn a plus or a minus on that C based on the criteria in this last column. Um, by earning a 70% or more on the final exam and 70 or more experience points throughout the semester. Experience points are things that I award for completing a variety of tasks throughout the semester that help keep you engaged with the course. So things like contributing to discussions, um, uh, commenting on, on textbook things, um, just sort of things where you are interacting with your group and with your classmates throughout the semester you earn experience points for. Uh, and those go towards helping to determine your plus or minus modifier on your grade. Uh, also the final exam, which the final exam is optional this semester. If you're happy with your grade when the final comes along you don't need to do it, um, but it's an opportunity for you to improve your grade if so. Um, and if you earn 70% or more on the final exam, in addition to 70 experience points, then you get a plus on your grade. 40 experience points and 40% on the final exam will get you the base grade without a plus or a minus. And if you don't meet those criteria, uh, then you get a minus uh, attached to your base grade. So that's how the grading works uh, for this semester. It's unusual, uh, and so please do feel free to ask me questions to help clarify how this grading system works. Um, jump into our courses Slack site which you will have gotten an invitation to, as you can find it at bsumath105.slack.com. Go into the discussion boards there, into the, uh, the announcements channel, and ask whatever questions you have about the structure of our course for the semester. Last thing I want to mention are coupons. So, to provide some additional flexibility uh, in the course, um, everyone begins the semester with five virtual coupons, and you can redeem those coupons for uh, extra opportunities to revise your work throughout the semester. So you can find those here in this column. So if you take a quiz or if you do an exam uh, and your work doesn't meet the progressing standard, so you either leave one or more problems blank or you make an inconsequential attempt at one or more of those problems, um, then you'll get a, an N mark for not assessed. If it's not possible for me to tell whether you've mastered that standard, then that's the score that you get. And in order to revise an N, you need to redeem a coupon. Same thing is true uh, of an exam that received an N for a retention credit. Um, so spend a coupon, I'll spend it automatically for you if you revise an N, um, and then that'll go against your five that you have for the semester. Also, um, this is particularly helpful, I think, later in the semester. If you need to revise more than one item in a given week, uh, you can revise two of them by expending a coupon. Uh, so there's a little bit of flexibility built into the grading system if you need sort of additional um, help with revising, especially as the semester gets toward the, uh, toward the end. So that's a lot of information at once, um, but again, please jump into our Slack uh, communication site to ask questions about the course between now and the beginning of the semester. Uh, a copy of the course syllabus is available here on Blackboard. I'll also post a version of it over here in Slack. Um, and again, if you have questions about the structure of the course or the syllabus that I can answer between now and the beginning of the semester, jump into the announcements thread and share them here. Uh, or if it's a question that's more personal in nature, feel free to send me a direct message directly through Slack, um, and I'll be in the Slack channel between now and the beginning of the semester to help you to get on board with everything that you'll need to start this semester. I'm looking forward to working with you, uh, and I'll see you uh, in the course.